Herbert W. Armstrong, Phoenix, Series 8W, Program 8W-13, the date July 29, 1978, Ambassador Television Productions. Now there are, well, I think scientists don't know how many galaxies, but many, many galaxies. And uh, it, it's just so vast and so great that the human mind will hardly conceive it. But God is so great that He created everything, He created all of that, and He created it for a purpose, and He created it to be used, and yet these planets have never been used. Well, as I said, this earth was the proving ground for the angels then, and is the proving ground for man now, to learn how to be a creator with God and to have our part in it. The World Tomorrow. The Worldwide Church of God presents The World Tomorrow with Herbert W. Armstrong. I think most people think that when God created the earth, it was created complete and perfect in every way. Now, you're half right. As far as it was created, it was perfect. God never creates anything imperfect. But when God created man, let me give you an example. When God first created man, He only created the physical man. And that was not a finished creation. After that must come the spiritual creation, and the real purpose of God was to produce or reproduce His own self and instill within man His holy and righteous character. Now God set before the angels, for example, uh, His own way, His own truth, but they didn't follow it. God set before Adam, the first man, His way and His purpose in man, and what man's ultimate uh, fantastic uh, potential really is. But Adam had to resist Satan, and he didn't do it. He rejected God. Well, I'm coming to that a little later. But uh, God first put angels on this earth. Very few people realize that, that before man, angels had inhabited this earth. But as you will read in Second Peter, the second chapter in the fourth verse, the angels sinned. However, when He created the earth, the angels shouted for joy because it was to be their home. And it was beautiful as far as it went. But it was, as I said, it was not complete. And uh, just as in man, man was complete as a physical being, but the cre uh, spiritual creation is still going on in human beings at least in a few. But God intended the angels to work the materials in the earth, to uh, improve, to beautify the earth, and to have their part in the creative process by finishing what God had uh, uh, created as far as it went. Now, I might say while I'm at it that He intended man to do the same thing. And we have not done it. What has man done to this earth? We have polluted everything that man's hand has been able to touch. Everything of God's creation that we have touched. We've polluted the atmosphere of the air. We've polluted, polluted the waters of the rivers and the uh, lakes and the seas and the oceans. We have polluted the soil that produces the food we eat. We have degenerated everything that God has let us have anything to do with when He intended us to improve it. But as I said, the angels rejected the government of God. They became resentful, 
And uh, so they rebelled. And as a result, the government of God was no longer being administrated uh, or observed on the earth. Now, God had set on the throne of the earth over the angels a super archangel named Lucifer. I've mentioned this time and again in preceding programs. Now, his original name, Lucifer, means shining star of the dawn. It means one who brings light and truth. But instead of bringing light and truth, which God had given him, he uh, fed his angels on just the opposite, on resentment and bitterness and on uh, rebellion. And so there was a rebellion. As a result of that, something that I know and that God has revealed and that I imagine there isn't one person in 10 million that knows or understands. All of the planets, like our planet, like our moon, like the planets of our solar system, like Mars, uh, Jupiter, Saturn, and so on, have gone into a state of decay. Now, decay is not an original created state. Decay is something that has had to happen by deterioration. It takes time to produce decay, so it is not the way God created originally. I knew that if we ever got cameras down on one of these planets, what we would find. And what did we see? Just the same things we have on the moon. Everything is waste and empty. Everything is degenerated. Everything is decayed. Now, it could not be the state in which God originally created it. And I, I don't know whether your mind ever dwelt on things like this, but mine does. I want to know all I can know about God and about the things he has done. How did these planets become decayed? It is not an original created state. Can't be. There is no way at all to explain it except that the angels were put here to qualify as the proving ground to qualify for them if they uh, would work this earth and improve it and finish it and beautify it, that they would go to other planets all over the entire vast universe. So now God set out on the most marvelous creative feat of all, to reproduce himself, and to reproduce himself with the idea of inculcating in humans that he would make his own perfect, holy, righteous character, so that we then could go and do what the angels had failed to do and what they might have done. And I have shown you on other programs that the... Uh, uh, almost incredible, unbelievable potential for human beings is that we are to finish the creation of planets all over the vast universe, so vast that you can't conceive it. But the first purpose of God in man is the creation of holy and righteous character. And that must come from God, but it must come with our own decision and of our free will. And we must make that decision. Well, now chaos and decay had come to the earth, but if you'll turn to the 104th Psalm, and I mention this quite often, where uh, in the 30th verse, the psalmist writes of God, Thou sendest forth thy spirit, that is, the Holy Spirit God sends forth, they are created, and thou renewest the face of the earth. God renews the face of the earth. Uh, he renewed it after it had been deteriorated as a result of the sins of the angels. Now, in six days, God renewed the face of the earth and created man upon it. Man was created in the very image of God. He created animals, each after its own kind, cattle after the cattle kind, dogs after the dog kind. But he said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. In other words, let us make man after the God kind. Man was made to have a special relationship with God that animals cannot have. But now, since this earth had a ruler who now became Satan, his name had been Lucifer, and now his name has changed to Satan, which is rival or enemy or adversary, it was necessary for the man that God created, whose name was Adam, 
to resist this way of this Satan, to turn from it, as well as to accept the way of the government of God before he could be used or qualify to take over that throne and to restore the government of God on this earth which had been here over the angels. But Adam said, in effect, well, now, look, God, I heard what you had to say. I listened to you first. And uh, I know you didn't let Satan even come to me until after uh, you talked to me and you explained to me all about your way and about your government and uh, so on. And uh, I know it's my wife who listened to Satan first, but I listened also. And uh, I have decided that I want you to keep your nose out of my affairs, God. I will make my own mind up of what I think is right and what is wrong. I will decide what is righteousness and what is sin. I will uh, decide what kind of God I want to worship. I know you're my creator, but I reject you as my God. I reject you as the basic source of revealed knowledge. And God said, well, you have made the decision, Adam. And therefore, it is your decision, not mine. And I sentence you and those that will come from you who will be the entire human family to 6,000 years of being cut off from me. For 6,000 years, you will have no access to me or my spirit, my Holy Spirit, which could uh, inculcate in you my divine nature, which could inculcate in, in you my righteousness and my holy and righteous character. You have rejected me, and I uh, now pronounce that sentence upon you and upon the whole world for 6,000 years. And Listen, my friends, that 6,000 years is not yet quite up. It almost is. We're in the last generation of it. Just think of that. Herbert W. Armstrong will return right after this message. Well, life's been pretty good. Summer home, yacht, vacation when I want it. Some little kids sure spent a lot of time with that. Too bad they never last. Yeah, a lot of things are like that. The kids are grown now and... Hmm. Sandy and I aren't getting any younger. Hmm. Is this all there is? You can know the answer to this age-old question, why were you born? To request your free copy, dial direct 800-423-4444. That's 800-423-4444. Four two three four 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 four. Now, Adam had failed, and there could be no uh, no one could qualify now until a second Adam came and did qualify to conquer Satan to resist Satan, to accept God's way, and to restore the government of God on this earth. Now, the human mind is hostile against God. I haven't time to explain everything about it now, but the human mind has within it a spirit that is not the man, is no part of the man himself. It just is in the man. It is not a soul. It's in the soul. The man is the soul, the whole man made out of the dust of the ground. And in Genesis, the second chapter, in the seventh verse, you will find that uh, God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, and man from the dust of the ground became a living soul. So the dust of the ground became a living soul, and the soul is not a spirit. Now, that shows you how the world has been so deceived this 6,000 years. That's part of the, very, one of the very central parts of the great deception that has come. 
but the human mind is one spirit that I call a human spirit, for want of a better word. It's not human, really. It's in a human. But that empowers the physical brain with intellect. Now, that spirit cannot see, it can't hear, it can't think. The mind or the brain of uh, each human sees through the eye and hears through the ear and does the thinking and builds the character, uh, good, bad, or indifferent, however it may be. The spirit records it, and the spirit acts as a computer and gives instant recall to the brain so that the human physical brain has that instant recall of every bit of knowledge that has entered and is remembered and uh, can use that in the thinking process so man thinks and man reasons. And man has the ability to even think creatively and constructively. However, the natural man is limited to what the eye can see, the ear hear, or what he can feel or touch or smell or taste. Now, you cannot see spirit. You can't hear spirit, it doesn't vibrate. You cannot touch or feel spirit. And so the natural mind of man cannot know the things of God. And they are, as the Bible says, foolishness to the natural man. Without the spirit that is in man, so no man, even with that spirit, can know the things of God without the Holy Spirit of God. In other words, he needs a second spirit. Now again, I said man's uh, uh, creation was not complete. Man was given that one spirit that gives him the carnal natural mind. But he needs another spirit to give him the spiritual mind and with which he can build spiritual character. And that's what we're put here for. Now you haven't heard this before. I mean, you haven't heard anybody else preach this thing. So was born Jesus, the second Adam. And he was coming to restore the government of God. He was coming to save the people and to make possible this holy and righteous character. Now I would like to have you turn to Matthew in the first chapter and beginning with verse 20. Behold, the angel of the eternal appeared uh, uh, unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived of her is of the Holy Spirit. Joseph was going to put her away because he found she was pregnant and he, uh, uh, he supposed it was from some other man. And he didn't know any better. But now the angel is explaining to him that this was a very holy thing coming from, uh, from God and the Holy Spirit of God. And she shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall conceive. Uh, a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son. They shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. That was the prophecy of Jesus coming as the Savior. Now, Jesus was both a savior and a ruler. So he was born also uh, to be a ruler. Now then, uh, we might now turn for a moment over to Luke in the first chapter of Luke. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever. Jesus was born to be a king. You don't hear that very much. You only hear of Jesus and of uh, his shed blood saving us from our sin, and his shed blood does not save us. Now, what do you think of that? A lot of people are going to say, well, that man Armstrong must be some kind uh, of, of a nut, and he must be wrong. Surely we're saved by the blood of Christ. No, we're not. Turn to the fifth chapter of Romans and read it. By the blood of Christ, the death of Christ, we are reconciled to God and given a contact with God, which we had been cut off from since Adam. But we shall be saved, it says, by his resurrection, by his life, not by his death. Death can't produce life. We ought to get these things straight. Very few do have the Bible straight. They've got it twisted, just like everything else. So was born Jesus, the second Adam. 
Satan tried to destroy him as an infant, as a child. But God saved him, had his parents take him down into Egypt for a little while until King Herod was uh, dead, who had uh, sent out a decree that all the children under two years of age were to be killed. Now we come to Luke, the second chapter, and verse 40. And it says here that the child grew and waxed strong in spirit, filled with wisdom, and the grace of God was upon him. Now remember that he was born of God, as no other human being had ever been. He was the Word that had existed with God. He was the one by whom and through whom God had created all things. As you read in Ephesians, the third chapter, and God created all things by Jesus Christ. So now he gave all that up. He divested himself of all that wonderful glory that he had had and came to be born as an ordinary child to grow up with Satan trying to have him killed, with people even spitting in his face, people insulting him, people giving him every time, kind of persecution that could be heaped on a human being. But being God, he was able to resist Satan, and he never once sinned. Now, Satan was getting after him the same as he does everybody and trying to, uh, through the spirit within him, but he also had the Holy Spirit of God as well as the human spirit. Herbert W. Armstrong will return right after this message. From dollars to foreign currency, from yards to meters, from ice to water. There's nothing really strange about the process of conversion. We use it every day as one form adapts to another. Yet, when the topic of conversion comes up in a religious context, somehow everything becomes a mystery. Why is that? Just What Do You Mean Conversion is a free booklet that examines this important topic in straightforward, understandable language. You'll see the difference between false and real conversion. What could be more important than conversion from limited physical life to eternal spiritual life? Just What Do You Mean Conversion? There's no cost or obligation. Send for it now. Call this toll-free number, 800-423-4444. That's 800-423-4444. Jesus Christ was born to restore the government of God on this earth. Now then, the first Adam had to make a choice. Do you know that Jesus Christ had to make a choice too? Jesus Christ had to make a decision of whether he would go the way of God or whether he would go the way of Satan. And Satan was allowed to come to him and to tempt him. But then, now we might turn back to Mark in the first chapter of Mark, beginning with verse 9. And it came to pass in these days that Jesus... Now, Jesus was about 30 years of age at this time, this is before he'd preached a word, that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan, the river Jordan. And straightway coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens opened and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him, the Spirit of God. And there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And then for forty days and forty nights he fasted. Not a drop of water, not a morsel of food for forty days and forty nights. And then Satan appeared to him and says, Now if you are the Son of God. See, that's a challenge. The average person says, what do you mean, I, if I'm the Son of God, I'll show you that I am, but not Jesus. That's what maybe you or I would do. He said, if you're the Son of God, you turn these stones into bread. Just do it, perform a miracle and start to eat because you're hungry. He said, no, he, uh, he said, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Well, Satan gave him uh, uh, three of the most severe temptations that could come to a man. 
There in that temptation by Satan, after fasting 40 days and 40 nights, was the most titanic battle that has ever been fought in all the wars and battles we have any record of in human history. Jesus Christ at that time qualified. He overcame and conquered Satan. Finally, he gave the order and said, Satan, you obey me. Get out of here. And Satan did get out of there. He qualified to set up and restore the government of God and to set up the kingdom of God. Now, he, he qualified where the first Adam had failed. Now, after the John was put in prison, verse 14, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel and the word gospel means good news of the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God has not yet come. He was telling what was going to happen. It was a prophecy of how God was going to set up the kingdom of God. Now, the kingdom of God is more than just restoring the government of God. Because the kingdom of God is the divine family of God. Those born into that family until they become God as much God as God the Father is only not with as much power, not as much authority. And it is then the family of God ruling in the government of God over the whole earth and later to rule over the whole universe. That is the fantastic, almost unbelievable potential of every one of us. And yet men are interested in that, the average man the average person says, look, don't bother me about that. I'm just interested in whatever little television show I'm looking at at the moment or whatever baseball or football game or whatever. And uh, just don't disturb me. I just want to be comfortable and go on enjoying myself. I can't understand it. I can't. People are not interested in knowing why they're here. Why did God put us on this earth? Most people aren't interested in those things. Jesus had qualified, and now he went out to proclaim the good news of the coming kingdom of God. That was a prophecy. He was only announcing what is going to happen. Now, he wasn't trying to get people to agree with him. He didn't require that anybody agree. He wasn't trying to convert people. Jesus Christ did not come on a soul-saving crusade. Let me repeat that because you have been taught that he did. Jesus Christ did not come on a soul-saving crusade. He came to announce of what God was going to do, and you don't have to agree with it at all. It's going to happen anyway. As a matter of fact, the world is going to fight against it. People aren't going to choose it. It doesn't make any difference. This is what God is going to do. He's going to restore the kingdom and the government of God on the earth and set up the kingdom of God. And uh, th there's no way that Satan and uh, all of the people on earth or anybody else can stop it. For the free literature offered on this program, write Herbert W. Armstrong, Pasadena, California, 91123. In Canada, Box 44, Vancouver, B.C. Or in the continental United States, you may call this toll-free number, 800 423-4444. That's 800-423-4444. In California, dial direct 213-577-5225. The preceding program and all literature were produced by the Worldwide Church of God.